So the next example we're going to look at shows how modern Java consumer interfaces can be used with the for each method to print out the values in a list by basically binding the println method to the for each consumer parameter. And it also shows us how to do some interesting things by sorting lists using a comparator and the function functional interface in various ways. This is kind of a fun example also. So we're going to have ourselves our own little thread class called my thread, kind of a boring name. And we're going to give my thread a name and that is used to give the name of the thread. You'll see how that gets used. And then the run method here is just going to print out what thread we're in and the name of this thread. That's how that's going to go ahead and get printed off. I think we can just do that. So let's now go down here and we're going to make ourselves a list of threads. And those threads are going to be given three my thread objects. Once again, we're, we're back to Stooge Land, Larry, Curly, and Mo. And notice that those are not in alphabetical order. And so we're then going to go ahead and print the results out. So it'll print out Larry, Curly, and Mo. And then we're going to go ahead and sort those using the comparing method on the comparator interface using the name as the way to do the sorting. So we're going to sort the threads by their names in ascending order. And then we're going to go ahead and print the results out. And then just for kicks, we're going to go ahead and sort things by name. But this time we're going to do it in reverse order. So now we're going to turn around and sort things. So this would, this of course, would print out Larry, Curly, Mo. When we sort them in ascending order, it would be Curly, Larry, Mo. When we sort them in reverse order, it'll be Mo, Larry, Curly. And then the last thing we're going to do here, just for kicks, this is kind of fun. We're going to go ahead and start all the threads. So each of those threads, we're going to use the for each method on the threads list object passing in the thread colon colon start method reference. That'll go start all the threads. They will then go off and run and, and you can see they're just gonna print off the name and the thread ID that they're in. And then we're gonna use the for each method again, except this time we're gonna wait for all those threads to finish by using the join barrier synchronizer. Join is a very simple form of barrier synchronizer that uh, appears in Java threads. And we use a very clever little exception laundering technique called rethrow consumer that converts the join method, which wants to throw or does throw a, a checked exception into something that throws a runtime exception. And that way we can avoid having to uh, write really ugly code here. And I can make this even more concise by doing this and then going ahead and just bringing in that particular uh, package name in class. So when we run this code, you can see what it does. It goes ahead and will first print out Larry Curly Mo, then it'll sort it. So now it's Curly Larry Mo in ascending order, then it sorts it in reverse order, Mo Curly, Mo Larry Curly. And then finally, each of those threads runs and prints out their name with their thread ID. And you can see we had three threads, we started three threads. We got three different thread IDs. Obviously not the best way to use threads in a program, just illustrating that there are in fact threads working here. And this is also showing how the for each method is used with a consumer. So for each takes a consumer and the consumer is something that accepts a result into it. It's got a single abstract method called accept that takes a parameter. And so we use that in this case to be able to accept the results into the in, in this case, into printing the results. So that's example EX5.